I'm currently on a ferry off the coast of Hiroshima, heading to an island that Japan didn't want the world to see. This was a top secret military base, and it was so secretive that it was erased from all maps of Japan. In fact, when the US dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August of 1945, there was no evidence that the Americans even knew about this island. Whoa. So I've been thinking about this island for a while now because the events that happened here, what took place, is representative of a bigger issue that Japan has with its history. And I was told to fully understand that I had to come here and see what was left. This island has a really dark history that I want to talk to you about, but it's also home to another mystery that is very different. And that's why was this once top secret military base that was erased from all maps now overrun with rabbits? I mean, come on. They're adorable. Hi. Oh, you can't be doing that here. I'm gonna get, this video is gonna get demonetized. I mean, they're everywhere and nobody quite knows why they're here or how they got here. Okonoshima is now a tourist destination nicknamed Rabbit Island. I mean, you are adorable, aren't you? And I promise these two stories do connect. So I'm here to find out about the, you can't say that seriously with these little guys around. So that's what I'm gonna try and work out today. The dark history behind Japan's Rabbit Island. Okay, so this island is now known as a tourist destination. People come here, there's photos all over Instagram of all the rabbits that roam this island. This is a hotel you can stay in. There is a cafe, there is a gift shop. It's on this beautiful island surrounded by amazing mountains, just more of Japan's wonderful geography. All because people are obsessed with these rabbits that inhabit this island. Can divert your attention away from the cutest rabbits I've ever seen and back to kind of what happened on Okonoshima. What sort of military base was it? What top secret stuff was happening here? This island was used by the Japanese army to create toxic chemicals, poisonous weapons secretly to use on their enemies. And they did it for over 15 years and nobody knew about it. They erased this place from the map. So that behind me is the poison gas storage house. So the Japanese army had been secretly creating these poison gases from 1929 all the way up until the end of World War II. Over the course of the 15 years, they reckon that over 6,000 tons of gas was produced here. This is the old pier where they used to load in all the old materials used. They'd probably load it in here, take it through this tunnel into the main building. Whilst people on the mainland just had no idea what was going on. So close, yet so oblivious. It's actually quite easy to see how this island wouldn't go missing if it wasn't on a map. It's so small and it was surrounded by all these other islands, so it's quite easy to see how it would go unnoticed. Okonoshima used to be a farming island. It was this beautiful place surrounded by all these wonderful islands. So after it was those farmlands, this just became like an army barracks, a site that they would use during the Sino War to store things, protect themselves, all these bunkers. That's what that was built for. And then in 1929, it was turned into a chemical poison gas plant. The facility belonged to the secondary Tokyo military arsenal. Sorry, but I, I can't do this. Hey buddy, I'm, tr I'm trying to film a piece about um, why you might be here and um, the poison gas. I'm, I'm sorry, please just give me a second. But this was a secret military base just made by the Japanese army to create poisonous gas weapons. And all sorts of horrendous and horrible toxic gases were made. It is claimed that they were used in China on over 4,000 people. 
By 1935, all of these gases were being produced right here on this island. And in that year, there was so many outbreaks of illnesses. The everyday workers that came here to manufacture the gas, they came onto this island and they were given protective outfits, but this was like very primitive protection. They didn't know a lot about what they were making. So this gas would get through the gaps and poison very slowly in some cases, the people that worked here. And this went on for almost 15 years. And it wasn't until 1984 that the Japanese people and the rest of the world knew about these poisonous gases that the Japanese army were using during war. After 1945, the war ended, the US came in and their allies and they occupied Japan. And they were like, okay, we need to get rid of this. We need to empty this storage container right here. What are we gonna do with all this unused poison gas? So they dumped it into the ocean. They took all those chemicals and they just dumped them to the bottom of the Pacific Ocean and incinerated the remains with flame guns. That's the black marks you can see on the inside of this storehouse. It took them about a year to clean up this island and it's unclear what the environmental impact was afterwards. But because the disposal was handled carelessly, it resulted in more people being affected, and it would be several decades before these victims were given government aid for treatment. Which brings us on to the rabbits. Why are the rabbits here? There is now no rabbits. All the rabbits are gone. They're somewhere else. But one of the theories is that they were testing these poisonous gases on the rabbits. And after 1945, when the Americans came and occupied and took over the island, they let the rabbits free, all the rabbits got out. And because there was no bigger predators on the island, they just, well, bred like rabbits. And this is what you have today. Everything kind of just looks like it was left. The Americans came, they got rid of the poison gas, and they left and never came back. But there isn't actually any proof that these rabbits are the ancestors of the test subjects. According to a professor of Japanese politics at the University of California, the test rabbits were all euthanized by the Americans. So it's still a mystery. There are rumors that a British couple brought them to the island or a nearby school released them in the 1970s. So who knows how long these rabbits had here to just run rampant and, you know, make it their home. Literally every corner you walk around, they jump out. I read somewhere that there is 700 rabbits on this island. I think there's way more. They're just everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. It's so funny to think that this was once an island that was erased from a map and people didn't know about it and it's this close to the mainland. This place is so bizarre and eerie and the history is hard to comprehend what happened, the amount of people it must have killed and affected. But after all that, it's now this little haven for these rabbits and a tourist destination. Well, you can still see the remains of what happened during the war and the years after. And this museum was set up on this island by the people and the families who were affected by the poisonous gas that was made here. So that is the dark history behind Rabbit Island. So thank you for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.